Biointegration is a marketing technology provider. We specialize in serving the enterprise Marcom, some of the world's largest brands, agencies, publishers, and printers. Today with me I've got Jorgen Franzen from Inpress. Jorgen, do you want to say a few words about your background? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jürgen. Uh, I'm from Impress Systems in Sweden. Um, we, uh, my company and I, we've been uh, working with Signet and Signet-related business since last century. We started in '96 with the first installation, and used to be a reseller, now turned developer, doing third-party add-ons, custom projects, and so forth for the Signet community. We've been working with IR integration for quite a few years, and. Uh, we're happy to be here for this webcast. Thank you. Yes, we're, we're very excited to see on file today. It's just being released now. Do you have a release date yet? Uh, probably going to be released a couple of weeks into February. Excellent. A few, few more weeks. OK. Um, internal to IO integration, we got to see a demo of this in uh, December, and it's a really exciting move forward for being able to um, effectively archive with Zynet. Um, also with us today we've got Kevin Martirana. He's the IO integration CIO as well as head of technical support and probably has deployed most of the systems of those of you in the audience. Kevin, do you want to say a few words about your background? Sure. I've uh, been uh, in the system engineering, uh, industry, system engineering solutions for the past uh, 25, uh, 20 or 30 years now. Uh, worked for numerous companies and uh, designed uh, full tolerant and high performance file servers for uh, many, many years for very, very large corporations. So uh, I head up the uh, support team here and I also have one of my associates uh, who's very, very familiar with the Archivar product, uh, Dave Lawrence, who will join us in a second. Excellent. Um, Dave Lawrence, also with IO Integration, the Senior Technical Support Manager. Uh, Dave, do you want to say a few words about your background in print and free press? Yeah, I got my um, start uh, at uh, a couple of different free press houses and commercial printers. I've uh, been working with Zynet exclusively since 1995, uh, starting with KA Share and moving into version the first version of full press, all the way up to web native. And I've also, um, you know, during that time, uh, worked on integrating a number of packages, uh, backup and archive packages, with uh, in conjunction with Zynet for archiving. That's excellent. Yeah. Very good. He's also an excellent photographer, by the way, for those that didn't know. So I also want to make everybody aware of a special offer we have going. Um, this was also promoted directly by North Plains and with Inpress. Um, everybody has partnered together to offer substantial savings. As you know, uh, FlashNet will support will be discontinued for the Zynet product starting in uh, June of, of this year. And so the offer expires June 30th, 2014. And so we'll go ahead and be sending that offer out to everybody that's attended this webinar along with the recording. And we will also try to capture some of the FAQs from the questions that go along with it. So with that, I'm just going to set some ground rules. Uh, we would like you to please use the window on your GoToWebinar control panel to ask questions. And you can ask questions directly to the panelists um, or to the whole audience. If you'd like everybody to see your question, you're welcome to do it either way. Uh, Damien Diaz is with us. Hey, Damien, you want to say hi? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So he and I will be helping to moderate the questions, and we expect the webinar to end at about 8.30 in terms of any presentation materials. And at that point, our um, panelists, Dave, Kevin, and Jorgen, will all be available to answer all of your questions, which we anticipate there will be quite a few. And uh, holding qu just a quick note, in, in the panel, we, me and Jill are both listed as IO integration, so you can send questions to either of those names in the panel. Excellent. So with that, um, Jorgen, are you about ready here? Yes. Excellent. I'm going to make you Kevin present. Okay. So we're going to make Jorgen the presenter. Kevin, do you want to go ahead and give a little bit of background on Zynet Archive and you know historically how this has been handled? Sure. So as many of you uh, are on this call are probably familiar with Zynet's uh, uh, solution. Zynet Solution is an AFP client or server running on uh, Linux boxes, Mac boxes, uh, Sun servers, and Windows boxes. And so it provides AFP services. When you provide AFP services, Mac files are typically broken into two pieces, a resource fork and a data fork. And that's a very challenging thing for a backup application to be able to deal with. So in the beginning, uh, Zynet uh, turned to an application called FlashNet 
which gave Zyna the ability to back up their systems and uh, to preserve the resource fork and understood Macintosh files. Understand it's a very unique environment. If you're running a Linux server um, and you're splitting the files into resource forks and you've got Macintosh users and PC users connected to the system, you have to have a backup program that's designed to be able to understand that. And that's really the main reason why, as an integrator, all of us sold FlashNet. It was Zynet aware and had that ability. Then they introduced a module later on called FlashWeb, which many of you are using. And that gave us the ability to not only back up the server, but also gave us the ability to do something called nearline archive. And what that meant is that we could push the data to tape. However, it would, look, it would still look and appear to the users that are on the system that the data that was on tape was still online. And you could search for the metadata fields, and you could look at previews. And when you wanted to, you could take an item, put it in your shopping basket, hit a button, and simply bring that asset back to the system, whether it was an individual file, whether it was a bunch of folders, and that was the nearline function. Today's on-file product is going to be targeting and discussing specifically the uh, functionality with uh, being able to push stuff to tape in an archive method via nearline and to be able to restore that. Um, however, the Archiware software itself, just like Flash, it has the ability to do backups and has the ability to do all sorts of incremental backups and synthetic backups, and uh, that's a whole other discussion in itself. But uh, this portion of this is going to be limited to the nearline functionality. However, if some people have some questions, feel free to ask them uh, regarding backup and everything else after the organization presentation. And I'll be happy to jump in here with Dave and uh, answer those questions. So without further ado, do you want to go ahead and get started, Jorgen? Sure. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, a few months ago when um, it became known that uh, FlashNet is ending its life for the Flash Web solution, uh, we were asked by North Plains to, to uh, in a joint venture, look at making a replacement for, for Flash Web. Uh, not only a replacement, but also um, using some new uh, technology um, in communicating with the Synet server. So the result of this is on file. Uh, it's the archiver for the North Plains Synet solution. And what it does, it really connects Zynet to archive solutions. Um, it sits in the middle on the same server, communicates to Zynet using the Zynet ABI and the Zynet database. And then it takes that information and communicates to archive solutions of different kinds um, using their APIs and tools to communicate. And on file, sitting in the middle, controls all these requests for archives and restores, um, initiates the archives and restore sessions, and store all the information uh, regarding these archive files into the on-file database. Um, OnFile has an expandable architecture. Um, it consists of a base module and then on top of that additional archive modules that will connect uh, OnFile to different archive solutions and services. With version 1 uh, that's soon to be released, we will do two of these modules. Uh, one is archive to disk, which will archive to local disk on the server, or connected to the server and uh, the module that connects to uh, the Archiware P5 restore, uh, sorry, uh, backup and archive solution. Uh, we also working on additional modules, but they will not be in, in this first release of OnFile. Uh, OnFile is integrated into Zynet, and for you users who have been using FlashNet will, will see that the idea is basically the same. Uh, you will archive assets using uh, a portal basket plugin. And this plugin was launched from the same uh, place as all the other plugins on the system. You can also archive assets using uh, hot folders. So you can drag your jobs or job folders that you want to archive into hot folders that has a specific name and it will automatically be brought into the archive. And the restore will happen through the sign at portal basket using the restore plugin. So it's a very similar um, setup. Uh, we have plans to, to support other methods of archiving and restoring in future. At this 
ti uh, time, we will only do the portal and the hot folder methods. On file is, is flexible. Uh, we use a concept of archive locations, which is really uh, an, a named configuration to a certain destination. Um, and that means that you can design, you can assign several archive locations. They could, for example, be go to different disks on your server or to different archive plans in your ArcWare Press Store um, application. It's possible to restore the predefined destinations, or you can browse dynamically when you do the restores. There are many different uh, configurations for approvals, uh, setting quotas, restore methods, and it's all done per assignment user or group. So different users using the plugin can have completely different setups. And we have um, a monitor that allows you to get an instant overview over the archives and restores that are going on at this moment. So let's take a look at the application. I'm just going to drag in a web browser. And this is logged into the, <coughs> to the well-known Signet native admin environment. Um, you will find the, uh, the on-file plugin under the plugin section. So we just click on the on-file button here and it opens up the on-file admin utility. Uh, the on-file admin is uh, organized into a number of tabs. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the location tab. And here we will add a new location. And the location is where do we send files for archiving. So I'm going to make a tape location. And for that location, we're going to use the ArcGIS P5 module. Add that here. Uh, it comes up with a name. Uh, I can add a comment if I want to, make it active. And then I need to specify where in, in, in ArcGIS do I actually place these files, uh, these archives. And in order to do that, I need to switch over to the ArcGIS P5 admin GUI. So for everyone, <coughs> anyone that hasn't seen ArcGIS before, this is the admin GUI. Um, I will log in as a, an administrator. And what I'm looking for right now is my archive plans. And the archive plans are located under archive, archive plan. And I only have one. And this archive plan has an ID, it has a name. And the only thing I need from an on file standpoint is the ID. So just make a note of that and then go back to my on file and type in 10001 and I'll save that and to make sure that it actually connects correctly I can click the test button the test button will initiate um, a communication channel to Archiware and uh, it'll get some information back like the Archiware version 5.1.0 which is the new one it tells me that the archive plan I'm using correspond to a name. And we can just check here to see if that's the exact name. And then it does a test um, to that specific plan to make sure that that plan is, is usable. And it comes back with an OK. So now we're ready to, to archive to this particular location. Now, archive locations are the method of how we select from the plugin where to archive to. And to enable a certain location, I need to go to the Users and Groups tab. And here I can find all my Zynet users and groups. And I can use the pull-down menus. I can type into the pull-down menus in case I want to limit my selection. Uh, in this case, uh, if I pick a user that doesn't have the plugins enabled within the Zynet admin tool, it'll tell me so. In this case, I'm going to use administration on a group. Um, and this is my setup for both the restore and the archiving section um, on, on, the 
on the plugin. In this case, I need to make sure that I have the tape set. Um, I will not use approvals. So I'll just leave these other options on and save. Make sure. And that's all I have to do in order to connect a certain user of the plugin and the on file backend to a certain um, Archive P5 archive plan. So let's jump into Signet as a user. This is a normal um, Signet exhibit site. It's running on the <coughs> portal 4.6. I will just type in my name and the password, sign in, and now I'm just going to go and find myself something to archive. So let's go to this user and this, and here are a couple of jobs. So I'll pick this job here, and it goes into the basket, and I'll switch over to the basket here and launch my send to archive plugin. And this is the on-file user interface for archiving. Since I had several locations selected for my, my group, um, I get a pull-down menu to choose where I want to put my files. So in this case, I will put that on the Archiver P5. I'm just choosing tape. Um, I also have the option of being able to delay the archiving to later, so I can say run this later tonight or another day. But in this case, we'll just send the archive request as it is. We'll just send the request. So now it goes into the uh, on file queue. Um, and to monitor that queue to see what's going on, we have uh, the monitor. And the monitor in this case doesn't show many jobs because there is currently nothing that we need to to handle. There are no errors. There are nothing waiting for approval. So I can jump to the tab for processing. I can see now that this particular job that I placed it has been queued um, to P5, and we are currently waiting for P5 to take take this job and and, and archive it to whatever that archive plan means when it comes to tapes and, and so forth. Um, while this is happening, uh, we should be able to see the status changing. Uh, but since Archiware P5 has its own internal queuing system, that means that it will probably take a few minutes um, to process these files. So while it's doing that, we're just going to close down the plugin, and we'll go back to our interface again, and let's go to images here. And here we can see a few images that were archived earlier. So I'm going to bring these into my basket. And while we're waiting for the archive to happen, we'll actually take a look at the opposite thing, restoring. So I'm going to launch the restore section here. Um, looks very similar. Um, depending on my options, I will have a number of different things that I can do here. In this particular case, uh, I only have the option to choose where do I want to put my, um, my restore. I'm going to put that directly into the jobs folder. I can input a folder name, so let's do this. And in this particular case, we had the approval uh, button checked in, in the admin GUI. That means that someone has to approve this restore uh, uh, session, a real request. But I'll send that in, and that means that it now ends up in the, in the restore queue, and it needs to be approved or denied. Normally, this would obviously be someone else doing it. Uh, it's, it wouldn't be very possible that the same person is actually doing both the restoring request and approval. But for demo purposes, I will just do this myself. So I'm going to approve this here. So now it goes into a wait state, and then it's going to be processed and done very quickly, because this was a 
archive to disk operation. So in this case, it's very simple, quick restore. And by looking at this uh, particular ID, we can now see that who, who requested it, who approved it, and now it's been restored. Close here and just go to my desktop to see inside jobs. I got a folder called restored. These are my files, and of course I can also see them in my portal as well. Let's see. Jobs and restore. So these are the files I just restored. Okay, so let's see what happens with the what has happened with the archiving session. Let's go send to archive. There are no files in my basket. I'm going to go monitor. And now we can see that it's actually done. So if I view all the done requests, this one was the tape. It now tells us that uh, it was queued to P5 and, and the archive request is done. 17 files were verified uh, and updated. So if I go back to my browse again and look at the folder where I actually archived from, which was this one, it's now set to near line. You can see all the subfolders are set to near line and all the files within are set to near line. So that's a very quick archive and a very quick restore using the new plugin. Um, and let's go back to my little presentation. Uh, so some of the highlights on file, it connects Zynet to the archive solutions. Uh, it's an expandable architecture. Uh, we now support Archive P5 and also Disk Archive. Uh, we are working on some more uh, modules. Um, there's a lot of flexible flexibility in the setups for Archive and Restore. We do it from the basket. We can also archive via hot folders, which is something I didn't show you here. Uh, we have the monitoring features, and there's a full admin interface, which you can actually use to view things like logs. If I go to back to my location that we created, the tape, I can view the log, and in the log, it will show me details about uh, the job I just sent to Prestor. Some prerequisites, it requires Signet uh, version 17.6 and the Signet portal 4.6, um, Archive P5, uh, version 5 or 6 and above, um, and it's going to be available for Linux, OS X and Solaris, and we believe to be shipping in a couple of weeks into February. So thank you, that's all I had in my demo. Thank you so much, Jorgen. That was excellent. Very informative. We have a lot of questions as we anticipated. Um, before we get started on questions, Kevin or Dave, did you have any comments of things you're anticipating people will ask that you'd like to make some comments on? Yeah, I think the first question they're going to ask is, uh, can it read the FlashNet archives? And uh, no, Prestor is a completely sour product and does not have the ability to read from uh, FlashNet tapes or archives. FlashNet's completely proprietary. So one would have to restore their data from tape or set up a restore station to be able to restore assets to existing FlashNet archives. Okay, any other thoughts of what they're gonna be asking? Well, with that, we'll go ahead and invite you to go ahead and put your questions into the GoToWebinar control panel. There are a lot of them. Um, Damien, do you want to get started? So the first one was, how will the FlashNet archives be handled if you move to the new options? And I think you've basically answered that with having to set up another restore station and then re-back up, right? The archives. Well, I, I have something to add to that as well. Um, we, some of you probably use our product called Interact. It's been around for quite a while. Interact has the ability to restore from FlashNet. Uh, that's something we are planning to put into on file as well. So while you put files into your basket, 
if you mix files that were archived with on file and file the files that were archived with FlashNet, we should be able to restore that. Um, we don't think that we will have the FlashNet restore for version 1.0 though. And there are a couple of small herders that we're currently working with North Plains on. But that would mean that you would have to have FlashNet and ArchiWare on the same server, which may in, in itself have issues. That's probably something more for the hardware guys, even Kevin, to answer if that's possible. Yeah, you would actually have to have uh, either two separate tape libraries as well. Uh, yes. Or two partitions of the same tape library, so um, you know it would, it would definitely be some configuration there to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and there is no one solution. You know, some customers are going to say, "Hey, well, I'm already doing a migration to a new server. I'll keep the old server set up, so maybe that's easier for me." Other customers have an existing tape library, and they're going to buy a new one anyway, so they'll dedicate the new one to you know for, to press store. So each customer is a little different, and we have to sit down with the client and find out what will best service them and the needs, what their budget is, and that kind of thing, so we can figure out what would be the best solution for each individual client. So you, you basically just answered this question, but I want to be really specific about it. Can this application live with FlashNet? Yes, it can. But but it, while it can do that, it would be strictly for restore purposes. If somebody were to get Flash, have FlashNet, <clears throat> they should really be using it in a read-only capacity with a goal in mind of ending support, because <clears throat> since support ends in June two, uh, 2014, uh, if something were to malfunction with the flash and after that standpoint, and you haven't restored your data or brought your data back, and you're continuing to archive with it, there may come a time when it just, you know, a new firmware comes out uh, for a drive, and that's no longer supported, and we can't restore data. Um, there could be a new version of Zynet that comes out, <clears throat> which is incompatible with Flash Web or design it drops flash web altogether. So those are some concerns that we have in the grand scheme of things that uh, point us to moving directly out of the flash net arena uh, before 2014 as much as possible. So another question is, is the flash net part the only thing that's being discontinued or is flash net as a product discontinuing? I believe flash the net. answer. Flash net is a product in relation to design it, design it backing up a Zynet server is being discontinued. They currently have two products. They have one for the video market and one for the print market. The one for the print market is the one that we use for Zynet, and that is being discontinued. And then in terms of being asked to pay for this when they've already made a substantial investment in FlashNet, can you talk about what types of parts of their investment they'll be able to reutilize, like their servers and whatnot? Servers will be able to be utilized, the HPAs, the tape libraries will be able to be reutilized. And depending on, you know, on each individual customer basis, some of the customers are simply buying some storage, connecting it to their server. They're storing all their data back from FlashNet, and then they're simply re-archiving it within uh, PressStore. So they'll be able to connect most of the hardware itself. This is more directly for Jorgen. Will it work from Impress's Impressive Interface, which you did discuss, or Portal only? Um, it's actually dependent on some Portal uh, back-end APIs. So you, in theory, if you have Portal enabled on the machine, um, that means that you can drive it from any front-end. So from Impressive, yes, but you still will have to have a portal license on your signup machine, which is something that um, North Plains is offering in their promotion. Exactly. So that actually leads well into the next question, which is what modules might we need that are not available right now? For on-file? For this archival solution to work with both um, Zynet and P5. So there's a couple pieces. Um, if your customer has web native today and does not have Venture and does not have Portal, and they're going to this ArchiWare and they have FlashNet, and they're going to be going to ArchiWare and down file, they're going to need to have Portal, they're going to need to have Venture. And according to the program that North Plains has released, they will be giving those to clients that meet those 
those needs to be able to move forward, which is kind of a nice thing. They will have to pay maintenance on them for a future, but uh, they are giving those programs away to those clients. The next kind of set questions are more about reporting. Um, so what kind of reporting tools are being offered so that you'll know that your archives and restores are successful, which I think you demonstrated, Jorgen, but then also how does this integrate between the P5 administrator and the on-file admin reporting? Well, in on-file we do um, email notifications, which I didn't show you, um, but that's built in. So an admin will get emailed when a restore and or an archive has been uh, made. Um, we have the log files. You can view the logs for each job and you can easily find out if, you, if, you, if, if there's any errors. As far as P5, what we, we, anything we do can also be found in, in, in the press store logs because we, we just act as a, a third party application doing the restores instead of the user doing it from, from the P5 utility. So everything we do with P5 will also be logged in P5. Okay, great. Um, is Flash not planning on doing an API to make the transition easier? No, unfortunately they're not. Okay. Um, is it practical to continue using FlashNet past the support expiration? And I think you've answered that quite effectively. It's not. It's possible, just we certainly don't recommend it because you're going to get to that point <clears throat> when it stops working and then what do you do? Right. No support. Can approvers approve via email and link response in terms of controls for uh, restoring approvers' notifications? Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Yes, in the email that goes um, to the admin, when you enable approvals, there is a link that takes you back to the monitor on that job. So you can easily click the link and then click yes. Will it work via web native without portal? Again, we're dependent on some of the back end APIs that in turn are licensed uh, exclusively through portal. So web native front end will work fine, but you have to have the portal licensed. And that's, again, that's, that's what NorthPlace is giving away for free. So this question relates more to archiving to multiple locations, so that if the archived files are backed up for redundancy, the example is that I currently back up files that are archived onto tape and then archived to disk. Web native then restores from disk and I can also restore from tape manually if required. Sure. Well, that gets that gets actually into uh, the scenario of, uh, of Prestor. Prestor has the ability to do multiple backups. It can back up the tape. It can back up the disk. It has the ability to synchronize one volume to another at another location. So depending on which modules you buy in the Prestor suite, you have the ability to replicate data as well via synchronization tools. Okay. Will OnFile and Arcuware run on Solaris? Yes. Yes, it does. Great. And then this, they're just recapping here. Will the Arcuware admin replace the plugin section of Web Native when providing access to particular users and groups? Can, can I say that again? Yes. So will the Arcuware admin replace the plugins section of Web Native when providing access to particular users and groups? Well, the Arcuware admin doesn't have any access to the signet. If you're talking about on file, it, 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 we will read and complement the signet ad admin. Okay. Right. So that's just who's allowed to do restores. Okay, got it. But it's maintained separately, or it will go ahead. And it will read the signet user, so it's easy to set up, right? Yes. Great. Okay. Will on-file support archiving or cloud storage to the Amazon Cloud or Glacier? That's planned for the next release after 1.0. 
using the setup does on file and archive maintain separate archive databases? Yes. Okay. There are three databases bases that actually are, are in use here. We have the Zynet database, which keeps all the file information and all the metadata and everything um, you need for the Zynet part. We have our database that has the connection between the asset and where it was archived and all the retrieval information. Then we have, obviously, all the indexes within P5 that keeps track of their own tape libraries and so forth. So effectively, some of the data are in three places. So then the next question is, is it possible for OnFile to automatically archive based on the age of assets? For example, to automatically archive assets that are older one year, possibly with um, triggers? Triggers is something that we are planning to, to, to take a look at as soon as we have the first version out. So triggers and actions to do enable archiving is, is, is high on the list. Can I just interject on that too? I mean, also since they support hot folders, there is capability with their hot folder support within this product for some uh, folders uh, and triggers and actions today within Zynet to move something to a folder which is then uh, be it's seen by the, uh, the tool and uh, backed up to uh, archive or pushed to archive. Yes. Agree, Jorgen? So we could do it yes. today. Correct. You're just telling me, you're, you're talking about coming up with a structure within your admin tool to do it a little more elegantly. Yes. So the next question is, can you set an email address to deliver the logs to you so that you get automatic notifications? We cannot send the logs entirely, but we can definitely send each, each um, request when it's been done. But if the full log yeah, that's, is, yeah. Yeah, those logs can be sent from Prestor. That's so that you'll receive those from the uh, backup archive application, just like you would with FlashNet right now. That's a great segue there, Dave. Will IOI be handling support for Prestor, or do we have to go to Archiware for support? We'll be supported directly. That will be us. Yep. Excellent. So just to clarify, we can no longer use a trigger action in data fields for archiving, because some customers have that set up already. Well, I mean, <clears throat> It's a destination. So when you say trigger to archive, you've always triggered archive and put it to a destination. So if you've gone ahead and set up a metadata field that moves files to a location that's watched by a backup software, <clears throat> you would simply adjust it to a backup location that uh, Prestor is watching and uh, on file is watching, and uh, that program would kick off and back up uh, or archive the data off to a tape accordingly. Right, like maybe that destination would be one of uh, Jorgen's hot folders. Exactly. Gotcha. How are bug lists and bug reporting going to be handled? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> we're going to be handling for our customers um, the bugs, just like we would through any other bugs for any other software program that we support. So if anybody has any questions or issues, they would simply submit a ticket to IO integration, and uh, we would handle the hardware, the operating system, the backup software, the nearline system, the on-file, and everything else uh, through our one-stop shop help desk. And we work with the manufacturer accordingly. Here's a question about customized scripts. So currently, our archive is to tape is a custom script that sends to tape after 60 days. Can we edit this script to work with this new tool? We also have a restore script that restores specifically to a certain volume. Well, yeah. a, res a restore can be hard coded to to a specific location, so that's not a problem. I didn't understand the first one with, with archiving. Can you read that again, please? Yeah, it's a custom script that they've got that does archive to tape after 60 days. And they want to know if they can edit the script to work with on file. OK, we need to, need, uh, need to know more about that script, what it does. But if it does what Kevin was talking about, actually just dumping a file into a hot folder, that wouldn't be a problem. But if it does something else, we need to see what it's doing. Uh, there is a sim there's a simplified API with on file to actually put things into the queue. It's not 
intended to be open yet because we want to add a little bit more functionality to it, but it could be possible to write scripts that actually, instead of you going through the plugin to do archiving, can actually just put in your um, request right into the database. And that's part of the release right now, but it has to be scripted manually. Got it. If a user attempts to restore an offline file, does the IT admin get notified via email? Attempt to restore um Let's say for take it out of the library for our tape library. Um, they took the tape that uh, your data was on. Uh, they would show in the interface, I assume, red, showing that it's offline. <clears throat> and would they get a notification as they do in Flashnet? Uh, the well, it would be an error condition, and depending on what error we get from 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 Pestor uh, P5, we would still we would definitely send an email to admin saying that this restore didn't work. Um, how detailed that is, I'm not sure exactly uh, the detail of that message from P5 in that case. But it should be possible to look at the logs and see what happened. OK. This is related. In the past, when the database was not properly synced, we were able to rely on the local app to locate missing data. What is the backdoor plan with this product? Are you saying that the web native database wasn't synced? Is that? Yes. Yeah, so what, what, what she's saying is that, um, yeah, if, flat, if you had to do a Flashnet restore as opposed to a Flash web restore, but we can answer that. I mean, that would be a Prestor restore at that point. If you, know, if you had to get to your data immediately, and assuming I'm on the same, same uh, thinking here, you, are gonna, you can just go into Prestor and re restore the, the file if needed. Yeah, you can do that. Right. So here's a good question. Um, if I transfer all of my... FlashNet archives to P5, do I lose the ability to browse by date, or d does my metadata field that shows my create date still show? So for example, if I had an archive from 2010, but now in 2014, and I'm putting it into P5, which date will show for create date? That's a good question. If you restore something from FlashNet, does it keep the creation date? Do you know that, Kevin, or Dave? I wouldn't bet any money on it uh, that it that, that it did or it didn't. Uh, sometimes it probably did. Sometimes it probably didn't. If it does, and it, if that's still in in the database, that means that it will be there when you re-archive it. But if it gets lost when you restore from FlashNet, then we, obviously it's going to be hard to recreate that information. I have seen it. I have it seen it preserved dates, and I have seen it uh, unfortunately not preserved dates. Dates and flash net for files have been notoriously bad for years. Right. So somebody was making the point that it's very easy to replicate data with cron scripts and resync. You want to comment on that? Um, with rsync, I assume is what they're saying. Yeah, with rsync. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, well, obviously we have we have lots of scripts that we've written uh, with rsync to be able to replicate data and uh, push data. So it all depends on what you're doing. If you're talking about our syncing data to another volume, that's fine. And we're, we're big advocates of that. Uh, Prestor has a module called uh, Sync, which does a much, much faster job, substantially faster. And some of our customers were getting, instead of 75 megabytes a second with our sync, we're getting, you know, 450, 500 megabytes a second with the Prestor synchronization tool. Both can coexist. Some people want a little more robustness. Some people want one interface to be able to provide those sync services. So that's where the sync module from uh, RPware comes into play. As far as um, as far as uh, our sync goes, uh, great tool, great functionality. Cron scripts, we don't think that they're ever going to go away. Um, and uh, if you do have the sync module and you get that sync module, I think that's probably the only thing that's going to enable you to stop using you know, those our syncs to replicate data from a volume together. Mainly the speed, performance, the logging, uh, and one common GUI that's managing your backups, your archives, as well as your synchronization across multiple sites. So you, it has the ability to synchronize to multiple servers and locations uh, from the system at the same time. And incredible yeah. performance. 
Yeah, you could do cycles too as well. So sort of like time machine backups with uh, yeah. with Prestor's uh, thinking. So it's a lot of feature rich uh, functions, and you have a GUI with it too, which is nice. Yeah. Would we be able to change the portal environment's directory structures without breaking the restore function? Can it keep up with changing file and folder paths? Well, I'm not going to presume to jump in on this for, for Jorgen, but I will just say that for most of our customers, we always recommend to go to a hot folder environment in an area of a file system that doesn't change, and then you can simply present that as an archive volume that way it gives you some expandability and you don't have to worry so much about archives that will archive for a customer that no longer exists or work that no longer needs to be maintained in the asset manager system. But I assume Mark, uh, you're going to chime in on that. Well, there's a little bit of difference in how it's done in this solution and, and in, in the Zynet solution because for us, the key is here the file ID, which means that if you move things around, we still have the ability to find what file you're actually looking for, and it's it's not in a FlashNet index. It's it's in a database in 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 the Archiware, which means it's, we can still get it the file e even if you change the, the structure. But of course, I mean, it's um, the question is really how do you how do you change the structure in in an archived database and in the archive section of the database in in Portal, which is not really possible. How often do you plan to with hard? I'll say it, Joe. What were you going to say, Dave? Oh, I was, I was just saying that it's, it's you know, there, you, when you archive, you're archiving to hard pathing that's stored in the database um, as well as press store. Yep. Next question is for Jorgen. How often do you plan to do releases and how will bugs be reported? Well, bugs are reported as every other product we have through our reseller or directly to us through email. Um, as far as how often we make releases, well, as soon as we have something, it's very hard to say how often. It depends on how if you're in, if you're working hard to fix bugs or if you're adding functionality. So, I mean, usually a couple of uh, maintenance releases per quarter and, and a larger release every six months. That's, that's usually what we do. Great. Um, the question again was, does OnFile work only with ArcWare P5 or is it also supported by other backup software? Currently it's P5, our own disk, disk uh, archive module, and next is going to be the Amazon Glacier um, service. If there are any other suggestions, please email them to me, and we can look at if there are any APIs that can be used, because it's very important that there is a stable and robust API to actually use um, when we do when we connect to, to this application. Will the new system support standalone AIT and DLT drives for my offline archives? Presto does support it, I guess. Dave? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, you can, um, libraries, standalone drives. Uh, on file, near line, uh, near line offline is a little bit trickier um, because at this point, there is nothing um, that will keep track of the exact st status of a file at every time as as you have right now because it's all built into to uh, the sign up code and they they are actually not um, the discussion of, of dropping the whole different uh, making a difference between a near line and offline and basically the only time you'll see the difference is when you make a restore it doesn't happen and you will get a notification it's a little bit unclear yet on how to handle offline drives um, to get the status back quickly to the user actually. So it's probably an area that we need to do a little bit more work on 
after the first release. Okay. Can the product back up to multiple tapes simultaneously, such as on-site and off-site? So that's an Archiware question for Dave, I guess. Yeah, so that um, we, we can do, with Archiware, we can do the, abil we have the ability to do tape cloning now, which we used to be able to do with FlashNet many years ago, somewhat reliably, um, which sort of fell off the map uh, with FlashNet. Uh, but we can um, set up clone pools to um, make duplicates of the data with Archiware. Is there a schedule like what exists in FlashNet now? Uh, yes, but you would schedule the archive job in the on-file software. So I don't believe that the archive would kick off, or would it, or Jurgen, on the, on the back end with Prestor if you had an archive job. I think that's all that needs to be initiated from on-file. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Correct. We, we uh, initiate every archive job into Prestor. Right, so we're before we would, FlashNet would initiate the archive. Now on file is going to be the, the middleware that initiates the archive. Yes. Oh, they already want to move to the cloud, Jorgen. Is there a rough timeline for the second release that has Amazon support? Well, rough, I would say within a couple of months after the first release. We basically looked at the API and have some test code working, but we needed to make sure that Archiware is, 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 is shipped. Otherwise, we probably would have waited for the cloud as well. But right now, it's, it's more important to get um, the tape solution out. So a couple of months after the first release. So hot folders, they're worried this won't be an effective solution for them since the files have to be moved. Can you share a few more details of how hot folders are going to work? Hot folders? Yes. Basically, you set up a hot folder setting. And that hot folder setting uh, tells us what folder names to look for and under what base path to look. So any file any folder name to archive within this base will at a certain time of day or, or time of week whatever you want to do uh, will be emptied out and, and archived so it's bas it works very much similar to the flash flash net flash web uh, hot folder Let's reiterate this one, Kevin. Um, so with FlashNet not being supported after June, does IO integration suggest migrating FlashNet archives to on-file as a best practice? And obviously, moving forward, you'd only use on-file. Or what would you think of a suggestion of best practice for existing FlashNet archives? Kevin? Dave, can you jump in? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we, um, if you're wanting to archive to tape, that this would be the tool to use. Sorry, I was going to be the only tool at this point right now. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I'm back now. Just just on mute. <clears throat> so uh, it really has to do with uh, the client uh, and the understanding that the support is going to end. So uh, we think that on many systems, FlashNet will work for many years to come, especially if you set up a restore station. You'll always be able to restore in time because you're not upgrading the software. Uh, so as long as you set up a restore station, you'll be able to restore back those assets, and you should be good to uh, to continue to do that. But I would not move for, forward uh, with any new install, with any new um, restores, or any new archiving to uh, FlashNet. Definitely, the goal is to get off of the FlashNet software and rebuild and restore all those archives back to PressStore. Back to a Prestoware system to get them into the uh, Asimov system. Uh, this is for Jorgen. Do hot folders have to be added to on file manually, or you, can you scan like Flash Web could automatically with the click of a button? Uh, okay, you don't scan. You don't have to. You just name whatever to look for and give it the base path of where to look in, 
and you don't have to scan because we scan automatically when we look. So at a certain time, if I do a daily at 2 a.m., uh, 2 in the morning, we will look for all two archive folders within this path, and you don't have to click that button to refresh any lists at all. That all happens automatically. Does it make sense? Yes. I hope. To prepare tapes for use, do you use the on-press interface or the press store interface? To do what? To prepare tapes for use again, presumably a restore. That's that's uh, Arcware press store interface. Okay. So we're so we're clear, guys. <clears throat> the main the main thing that we're doing with the uh, on file tool is being able to leverage the Prestor software that's already installed in the box. Uh, the on-file does not perform any backup functions or features like that. It's strictly nearline archiving. So all the features and functions of the Prestor uh, configuration, setting up schedules, all that stuff, will continue to stay within the Prestor for backup and for setting up uh, data pools, either for uh, uh, disk volumes or for, tape, uh, for tapes and tape groups. All that will be set up accordingly. In press store, and then uh, as Jorgen showed, he can set up uh, and see those very locations. Exactly. Any any tapes that need to go in that are not in the library, they're you know you put them in the library night right now, like you do with Flash, you would update the inventory with the press store software. So any any of that back end handling is all done with press store. So I think we're at the top of the hour here. I'm going to go ahead and ask the last question, and the rest we will move into the FAQ. There were also a couple of um, suggestions for features, which we'll make sure you receive, Jorgen. Okay. So the, can P5 do multiple copies to different groups like we have in FlashNet using multiple groups in serial copy, and does this have to be done with tape cloning? So that's, that's a, again, that's a press tour question, and that would be tape cloning or doesn't do a serial, you know, that was kind of a uh, FlashNet way of being able to write to two groups, but it would have to write in a serial manner or that parallel manner that never actually worked. With. So you had to do it in a serial manner. Um, so you would actually use tape cloning on the back end with Prestor, and that's, you'd set up a clone pool, uh, and it would effectively do the same thing. Okay, we have a few more questions. Let's see if we can get to them really quickly here. Um, We'd like to know who's restoring what. Can OnFile tell me in its logs this information? We bill back for restores, so tracking them is important. Um, well, it's all in the monitor. It's all in the database who is restoring what, obviously. So currently, you would have to look at the monitor or the emails that go out. Um, but it wouldn't be very very hard to, to write something that actually extracts the information from 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 the requests right out to a flat file or something. I'll write that down as a feature. Okay. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for your time, Dave, Kevin, and Jorgen. We really appreciate getting a first look into on file and we'll remind everyone again that the recording is going to be available and we'll also send out an FAQ with the special offer for the pricing that's available through June 30th. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thank you guys.